Hi Trader, Tina here once again from shortmeeting.com with my daily recap. As per usual, I usually like to open up open up with the overall markets. I usually pay attention to the S&P 500, but there's times where I'll do uh, analysis of the small caps or the Nasdaq or the Dow. But uh, for today, let's continue and stick with the SPY. Uh, currently, I have no position in the SPY, right? The SPY ETF. ETF, if you remember, I actually went short a couple of trading days ago and ended up stopping out for a manageable small loss uh, because I saw, or it appears as though the market wanted to rally. So I said, let me just kindly step to the side. You know, fast forward a week or so, the SPY today is down 1.45%. We closed at $391.48. And let me show you what I'm paying attention to. I went short, well, I guess it was early March, because I went short once the market actually breached this upward trend line that it started after bottoming in 2020 of March, right? And uh, I'm not sure if I stated it, but it's a daily chart. So here, I think I talked about this yesterday, this 393.95 area, we breached it here. I believe I stopped that around there. Um, and then you can see we're pulling back, uh, today, right? So we're down about 1.45%. So heading into tomorrow, next week, etc., I'm still going to pay attention to this trend line here. It's definitely in play for me. If the market, uh, you know what? I would say if the market opens down, uh, tomorrow, I probably, uh, I'm going to initiate a short anticipating, uh, that the market may head into next week and pull back more, but not sold on that yet. Ideally, I should wait until it breaks this line here, but considering um, what I've been seeing the last few trading days or months, considering price action today, the market looks weak in my opinion. You can just look here, the selling, the selling, the selling, the selling, it's in the volume. So to be continued, paying attention to this trend line here, that's around that 380 to 385 area. If the market breaches that, chances are we're gonna have a more steeper pullback. What else? All right, all is not lost in the market. There are uh, some trades that I'm paying attention to, you know, that I feel like they can offer up good opportunities because they're showing bullish Price action now looking at Berkshire Hathaway B shares right so this is a daily chart we're up marginally 0.18% on the day right it's not this is not one of these sort of meme stock it's definitely not I mean this is Warren Buffett it's not a meme stock it's not AMC it's not GameStop uh, but I do think the the um, the price action or the technicals uh, within the stock or on this chart looks quite promising. And I will talk about what I'm seeing here. Again, it's a daily chart dating back to 2008. You can see it's, it's a long time. It's been in this uptrend. And we can say from 2017, we started to train, trade within a particular range. Uh, the stock was consolidating and right here, January of 2021, December of 2020, let's switch to a line chart. You can see that we are breaking out. So ideally for me, if I was to get into this trade, you know, I like the pullback. So sitting here at 252.46, I probably wouldn't enter there, it's just me. I'd probably wait until it pulled back to that 230, area and then take a stab. But liking what I'm seeing with Berkshire, what else? All right, Wells Fargo uh, daily chart, it's up about 2.4%, closed at 4081. Uh, This is a chart that goes back to 2015, about six years, but definitely I wanna pay attention to that peak in uh, January, February of 2018. Stock has been in a downtrend. It tried to get above that trend on certain occasions. You can see here, October of 2019 to March of, um, I'm pardon. So October of 2019 to around, uh, we can say February of 20, you can see it actually broke out of this downtrend here. Couldn't sustain that. We, uh, the stock cratered as did the market last year. And you can see it's powering back. 
And right now sitting at 4081, we're actually trading above this downward trend. It might signify, ooh, I'm gonna put might in quotation marks, right? It might be signifying that there's a, tr a change in the trend. I'm not sold yet with Wells Fargo, but again, on my watch list for both a potential long and a potential short. If this does not sustain, uh, chances are I think it would make a good short. What else? All right, so Microsoft, a thing of beauty, right? So let's go to the weekly chart here. Uh, I actually got, and I don't know why I let go of my shares, right? I actually got into Microsoft, I want to say in 2015, 16, when I was trading in the 40s, I recognized the pattern, right? You can see here, uh, boom. I don't wanna say boom, that's just so cliche. Uh, granted, we're off uh, about uh, 2%. On the day, this is a weekly chart, right? Let's go going back to 1999, all the way to 2016. This is why I like these sort of uh, uh, patterns that take years to unfold. I'm talking about five, 10, 15, 20 years. I've spotted, I spotted like two or three of them already um, in the market that I'm actually paying attention to because I want to get in. But this is why I like um, uh, stocks that trade within or i like stocks whose whose patterns have taken years to develop and materialize because once they finally break out the gains are really astronomical and so again with microsoft right weekly chart from 1999 until that breakout in 2016 i don't know do the math what is that 90 2000 20 uh, about 20 years or so once it once it broke out here in 2016 from that 60 dollar level look what happened right we're sitting here at 230 that's uh again do the math i didn't do the math my apologies it's like what Four, uh, uh, three, I don't know, a four bagger, five bagger. It's not a 10 bagger. I don't even know, is there such a thing as a three bagger, four bagger? But you you get my point. Like it definitely appreciated a lot once breaking out of that $60 range or top that it put in in 99 and we're sitting here at 230. So if you ever stumble upon a chart that looks like this, once it gets above that breakout base, uh, it makes sense to go long because generally speaking, you see this, all right? I hope that makes sense. Fumbled a little bit, but that's what happens when you just sort of like do this live without any stopping or editing. What else? All right, we're gonna like cut it really quick with Spotify. I've been in and out this trade. I love Spotify. Um, we're down about 4% on the day, close at 271.73. Uh, and for me, what's telling is, and I'll show you right now, this right here, we broke, right? We actually broke to the downside. It hits support. Generally speaking, you know, I would expect, or I would play it for that bounce, but it doesn't always work out. Sometimes this happens. Uh, and so for me, just looking at Spotify, while I still think, um, a potentially good trade can emerge, I don't see it as of yet. Again, we close at 271. For me, I'd wait for it to get back to around that 220, 225 area. I'd play sort of like second support uh, and see if we actually get the bounce, right? So have my eyes on Spotify. It's actually kind of sad to see it break down here. Ideally, what you would have wanted to see is for it to break to the upside or at minimum, continue to consolidate between the two points or to continue to trade range bound. So let me draw a line here so you can see what I'm talking about. So again, it's not necessarily, I'm not throwing the chart away. I think a, a potential trade is still there. Uh, obviously I wouldn't take the trade until it gets to around that 232, 35 area. Uh, but going back to what I was saying before, uh, ideally for the, the chart to look the strongest and you know, it's been, it's been breaking out, consolidating, breaking out, consolidating. And so if we go back here from June of 2020, you can see here that it's trading within that range. You have the breakout, 
you're trading within the range and you had an attempt at a breakout right here however it could not be sustained and then you're seeing this here now ideally like i said before what would have been favorable for spotify and what i would have liked to see again would for it it would be for the stock to continue to trend or not trend i don't know what's going on with me oh it's late i'm tired anyway it would have been nice for the stock to continue to sort of like cycle through these two points here and break to the upside versus now it looks like it's breaking to the downside. So cautious if you're long, but again, I wouldn't necessarily throw the stock away. I still think a potential trade can emerge. I didn't do any penny stocks today. Maybe I'll tackle that tomorrow. So let's cap it there. Tina here once again from shortmetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of that video, do a couple things for me. One, like and comment in the comments section. That's the first thing. Uh, second, right now, what we're doing is hosting a free 14-day trading course on our website, essentially detailing the things that I've learned trading the stock market for the last 20 or so years. So if that's something that you seem to be interested in, definitely head on over to our website website shortmeetina.com sign up become a member thank you for listening and as always thank you for the support march blitz continues where i'm doing a video every single day for the month of march with the exception of the weekends because the market is not open on the weekends all right so jump along uh, more videos tomorrow i'll see you then take care